10,000 tons of freight is carried in and out of Bangalore every day by 500 freight companies. India's phenomenal economic growth is being driven by manufacturing and export. Yogesh Arya manages one of the biggest transport companies here in Bangalore, and the railway is at its heart. It's the lifeline of India. I would say uh, it's the vital part of distribution industry today. Now the biggest uh, thing happening in Indian railways is the dedicated freight corridors, where we'll have the tracks only for the freight trains, which British never built where we'll have uh, only freight tracks, where we have large logistics park, industrial parks, and uh, large uh, container depots and dry ports. So this is what the modern India has built, and this is what has transformed the business uh, at a greater height. 160 years ago, it was Dalhousie who first harnessed India to the iron horse in the railway revolution. But today, it's the Indian entrepreneurs who benefit from his legacy. Now, this old railway system and all sorts of other things have made you and your family very rich. <laughs> uh, do you sometimes feel that you are now the exploiters? You are a successor of those British authorities. Do you ever think that? India is growing, so you need to grow with India. And it's just the business mindset. It's the strategies. It's, uh, and the Indians are famous worldwide. And they are the best strategists. They are the best analysts at the age group, which we have between 18 to 35, is the largest in the world today, which are ready to be entrepreneurs, which are ready to be bigger industrialists. <laughs> The more things change, the more things are the same. What's interesting is that the way that this businessman has been talking is exactly the same way as a businessman would under the British Raj. He's talking about the movement of goods, making profits, making sure the goods arrive on time, making sure that the system works. Because, of course, the key thing about the empire is that it always was in India about profits and about trade. And what's interesting about modern India is that that idea is now central, it's absolutely mainstream. And what's very interesting is the system through which it flows is the dear old railway system. So we are back to tracks of empire. All across India, the railways are still vitally affecting the lives of one billion people in ways which would have delighted their colonial architects. I think they'd have been pleased. They'd think, well, these are our successors. These are our natural successors. And if they're Indian, well, that's surprising, but they're very good. Where previously the concept of time would have varied with distance from village to village, now trains all over India come and go on a pre-arranged schedule. Railway clocks punctuate the day, and the old phrases remain. Going places, racing the clock, and full steam ahead. Once the railways were established, a modern economy became possible. The tracks laid originally by the British are now being lined with fibre optic cable connecting India's broadband system. And the Indian railways are now expanding their network to meet the increasing demand. Progress has been earned the hard way by India, but now the 40,000 miles of track has helped to turn the country into a real force to be reckoned with in the global economy. It's also become, in a very direct sense, a force for good. This is the world's first hospital on rails. This train travels to stations deep inside rural India to deliver life-changing surgery of the most up-to-date kind. One of the reasons it's been so successful is that it's part of the trusted fabric of the nation, the railways. 
Zelma Lazarus is the head of the railway hospital project. People would, in a way, prefer to have an operation done on a train Certainly. than in a hospital. The train is part of their lives. The hospital is an alien being. It's gone away. It's something... You don't know what's going to happen there. The train is theirs. It's yes. part of their life. They know it. And they will connect immediately. They would prefer to come to the train. A hundred operations a day can be performed on the train. The railway has brought science and medicine into India's ancient heartland. The beneficial effect of this new use of the railway can be dramatic. Cleft palates were once seen as a curse, and the children who suffered were often hidden from sight. Now the train brings access to a simple operation that not only transforms a child's life, but the attitudes of family and village. What is she saying, Zelma? She said that she got the news about the train and she wasn't sure, but she decided to go. And she was very, very pleased and she's grateful and she said God is good to her. Yes. How, how old is the child? Mm. She was the youngest patient. Yes. Just yes. three months old. Just three months old. Yeah, she's and just three how months well old. It looks as if it's healing very well. Yeah, it is healing very well. Just a bit of scab is there, which needs to be cleaned up. How pleased is the mother? I saw the tate. Achha, operation. And after operation, hone ke baad bhi achha lag raha hai. She's very happy. Her child is going to be beautiful again, and she's happy she they made the decision to go on the train. So much of what we see today and the life today, putting it simply, depends on the railways, doesn't it? Yes, I would like to say that. The train is an integral part of village life. Everything happens when the train arrives. The vegetables come, the food come, the people move, and it, it connects the world, practically, the world outside the village. It connects. So it is a way of life. That is a revolution, isn't it? It is, it is. The railways are India. Without them, India wouldn't be India. I've traveled the length and breadth of the nation to discover the amazing story behind the construction of the railway network. I've glimpsed into the heart of a nation that not only depends on its railways, but loves them too. This ceremony is amazingly the retirement of a train driver. Now, doesn't that show you how much pride there is in Indian railways? When they retire, they're still in love with the railways. They want to make a big show of it. It's wonderful. Working for the railways has become a sign of status and prestige, because today it's the railways which provide India with a chance to take on the modern world. Hundreds of thousands died in the railway's construction from accidents and disease. But the railway pioneers moved mountains. The engineers bridged the largest rivers in the world, struck across floodplains and drove through deserts. They made great cities and created entire industries, supporting communities across the nation. The Victorian engineers brought new technology to harness the strength of old India to buttress the might of the British Empire. But in the end, they helped a new India to emerge, an independent India, proud and free. We go back to Glamour's Golden Age here on BBC4 tomorrow at 8. And still to come tonight, how 72,000 people in Wembley and billions more on the telly witnessed a handful of global stars trying to change the world. Rocking all over the world with Live Aid, next.